Shabazz. Welcome to Passion Time. I'm here with Dr. Myla McManus. She is the author of Highway to Health. She is a family board certified physician, but she took a different path, uh, a less conventional path, uh, focusing more on wellness. So uh, she's the founder of the Woodlands Institute for Health and Wellness. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. And I want to know how you found your passion. Well, it was a long journey of health problems as far back as I can remember, age three or four, um, that just continued to evolve and went to medical school thinking, oh, I'm going to learn how to heal myself and just got sicker and sicker and added more drugs and more drugs to my regimen and um, I had the fortune of discovering this whole field of wellness, which is everything we don't learn in medical school and a huge part of wellness is nutrition. You know, I was raised on honey buns and ding dongs and, oh, and donuts yes, and you know, And I went through <laughs> all of my medical school training, surviving on Taco Bell and Chico's. Oh my gosh! And nobody ever taught me that was bad for me. Wow! You know, wow. nutrition's not a requirement. And it's not changing either. I don't know when you went to medical school. What, 10, 15 years ago? Yeah. And it's not changing yet. I, I talk to medical students. I'm like. What? They're not teaching you nutrition? No, they're not. So I want to know, you as a doctor, what are you concerned about the most when it comes to food or our food supply? Well, I have a lot of answers for that one. I'm not um, a loaded it's question. Becoming, <laughs> it's becoming um, just more processed, more and more processed, more, more genetically modified. And it scares me that... I believe that most people feel that if there's something on a grocery store shelf that it must be safe and okay to eat. And it isn't. Mm -mm. I heard that the FDA is run by food uh, manufacturing executives. But there's a lot of them in there. So, um, But I can't prove that yet. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. But I, you, there is a difference between what you suggest the, uh, to your patients and the so-called USDA food pyramid. Tell me the difference. Well, the food pyramid, also conflicts of interest, I'm sure you can dig yes. up. Yes, yes. <laughs> is very heavy on recommending grains, mm -hmm. you know, wheat and eat lots of breads and pastas and, and dairy products. And those are huge problems that I see in my practice. They're on the top five sources of food sensitivities and food allergies for people. Yeah. And I don't, I'm not necessarily talking about anaphylactic shock and hives from a particular food. These types of food sensitivities um, that we address in my practice can trigger anything from a skin rash to schizophrenia. <gasps> so people just don't realize. That's extreme. It is. People don't realize what they're eating and they don't know. And we just have so many chemicals in our food. And the genetic modification of foods has caused the incidence of food allergies to skyrocket over the years. So it's the process and the chemicals. What are the worst perpetrators? You mentioned uh, grains, and they're not necessarily, grains are not necessarily processed, are they? Grains or once are, they are cooked, they become processed. Yes. Well, problem with corn, which is a grain, a lot of people think is a vegetable, but <laughs> yeah. corn is a grain, it's a grain yeah. and corn is genetically modified. Unless you find organic, it is genetically modified. Wow. And, and it's subsidized, by the yes, way. Yes, and, uh, yes. So it's corn syrup. <laughs> yes, and so that causes major problems. And people think, oh gosh, I'm eating whole grain wheat bread. That must be so good for me. When in fact, what people don't understand is that bread is still highly processed. Right. That, that wheat today has been so genetically modified and hybridized that it has 40 times the amount of gluten as wheat did decades ago. It's full of bromides. Uh, if you remember on the periodic table in chemistry years ago, I there's, don't, 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 that's okay. <laughs> there's uh, you know, on that right side, right. there's iodine and chlorine and right. bromine. And so um, the bromides that are in breads, they start to displace out iodine in the body, which is extremely important for your thyroid function and just, you know, lots of other factors. But, um, you know, people don't, and the preservatives in the bread, so those are just more chemicals added to the toxic load in the body. Right. Now, the Highway to Health book um, has some nutritional advice. Um, obviously, we want them to get your book, but what, is, what are some of the most important nutritional advice that you give in the book? And I'm sure you've updated uh, the information. 
Yes, we need a new addition. Just to, I've learned a lot more since then. Since right. then, for sure. Um, the purpose of this book was more of a nutrition 101, so to mm -hmm. speak, of starting people from scratch and discussing, you know, what are ideal food choices in different categories. Like, what is an ideal protein versus an okay protein mm -hmm. versus what protein should I be avoiding? Um, you know, what is a good fat? What's a bad fat? And then, you know, even spices, what's good spices and bad spices. We talk about um, inflammatory versus anti-inflammatory foods. But Can you give me some examples of those? Sure. So in terms of fats, mm -hmm. uh, well, back to the food pyramid question, right. we are heavy on promoting fat intake, the good fats. You know, okay. fats have been vilified over the years, exactly. but really sugar is the enemy. And, and yeah, sugar is the enemy and, and processed foods. And processed fats are and bad. The good, and the good fat is like olive oil, yes. how about coconut oil? Absolutely, and um, nuts, nuts. Um, avocados. Yeah, avocado grapes, mm -hmm. okay. and seeds. And, you know, even grass-fed beef is a good source of, of more beneficial fats, egg yolks, but of mm -hmm. course we promote pastured eggs, organic eggs, things like of that. Course. But we have to meet people where they are. When and they what the most inflammatory foods are? Fried processed. foods, processed foods, trans fats like margarine, um, using canola oil has a lot of trans fats. So, When you have somebody coming into your practice and they're overweight, which most of us are, um, what is the first step? It seems to be so difficult to, to lose weight or release weight. What, what are some of the first steps that you suggest? I'm sure that you have some of, some of those ideas in your book. Yes, well, it starts with eating real food. Yeah, <laughs> we're going back to the, yes. to the as easy as don't buy processed foods. Yes, and then toxins. The more toxins you're exposing yourself to, the more your body has to store those toxins because your body's limited in how quickly it can detoxify. And toxins are stored in our fat cells. The more toxic burden you have, the more fat cells the body wants to make and keep to store more toxins. Mm. Um, you know, we also look at hormonal issues are a huge factor with that. Stress, sleep deprivation, emotional issues also affect, um, you know, holding on to extra fat. And something that we look at that's not well known is that we've learned that the blend of microbes that live in our gut actually help to dictate our metabolism and how many calories we extract from our food, which is an explanation as to why some people are, you know, bean poles no matter what they eat. I know. I wish I was one of those people, <laughs> yes. but I'm not. <laughs> now, um, you said something very important. I've heard this from other doctors, pr primarily complementary doctors, um, that a lot of disease starts in the gut. Tell me about that. Absolutely. Which goes back yeah. to how important nutrition is for our health and wellness. Mm -hmm. It is. And there are various factors that affect the gut health. Um, you know, antibiotics are a huge problem, and who hasn't taken antibiotics here or there? So you have to take probiotics after um, antibiotics? Yes, but that doesn't always do the trick. Okay. Um, there's, you know, steroids, which a lot of people have been on steroids. Just ambient radiation exposure can affect the health of our gut. Our diet affects the health of our gut. And when your gut becomes inflamed and out of balance, it just sort of opens up the floodgates to allow in um, food particles that aren't fully digested and chemicals that normally wouldn't be able to be absorbed and disease-causing bugs that normally wouldn't get past those gates. Now, what are some of your words of encouragement as we end this segment uh, to people who are trying to get healthy? You know, it's a it's a journey for all of us, and it's okay to fail. We can't all be on the wagon all at the same time. Right. We can't all fit all at the same time. Right. And that it's okay to start with baby steps. You know, make one significant change and master that, and then you can move on to the next change. So if it means, you know, that you're going to stop drinking soda, but mm -hmm. you're not going to change anything else until you're comfortable you with slowly, yeah. finding a good substitute for soda. Mm -hmm and then move on to the next thing and just try to eat more real food and less processed food. All right, Dr. Amala McManus, thank you so much. I'm the author of Highway to Health.